Today we are going to be talking about conditional probability. And I'd like to begin this video by having you copy down this 2 by 2 cross-classification frequency table, also known as a contingency table. Pause the video, copy this down, and I will then hopefully lead you through some ideas. So here we have a very typical setup for placebo-controlled randomized clinical trial. Such a setup is actually as simple as it possibly can be because the treatment variable only has two possibilities, drug and placebo, and the outcome variable only has two possibilities, yes and no. So from the perspective of teaching conditional probability, this is actually as simple as it possibly can be. So conditional probability uses the word given. And the word given in the language and symbolism of conditional probability is represented by a vertical line. So let's say we wanted to determine what this symbolism here, P parenthesis, yes, vertical line drug. What does that even mean? If you want to read this technically correctly, this should be read as the probability of randomly selecting a study participant that's really what the P means, <laughs> who achieved a positive outcome. That's what the yes means. And then this vertical line means given drug assignment. So pause the video for a second and see if you can figure out what to put in for the numerator and what to put in for the denominator. Okay, so now let's think about this. A probability is a total in the denominator and some number in the numerator. So what would the total be? Well, when it says given drug assignment, it says we know that the study participants were randomly assigned a drug. And there were a total of 86 participants who were randomly assigned the drug. And out of these 86 participants, 30 achieved a positive outcome. It's really that simple. However, simple things in this world often uh, becomes confused. And what students typically do is they typically confuse the word given with the word and. I'm not kidding you. Some do. You might not, but you might. So let's see if we can contrast this with the probability of yes and drug. And you'll see some different symbols for the word and in different contexts. Sometimes you will see this intersection symbol. And in logic, you'll see this symbol for n. Um, I actually prefer a and d because uh, <laughs> it's more versatile, but it's your choice. So the probability of yes and drug, well, the total is actually different here. This would be like the probability of randomly reaching your hand into a jar with 290 marbles, but there are only four types of marbles, you see? Each marble is labeled either drug, placebo, and either yes or no. So there are four types of marbles. And out of those 290 marbles, only 30 of those marbles say drug and yes. So this is actually 30 over 290. So I want you to notice that the word given and the word and mean different things. Given uses marginal totals for the denominators, and and uses the grand total. See, if you go back to this table, um, these row totals over here are called marginal totals. The column totals also are called marginal totals. You wouldn't use them in a, in a randomized clinical trial, but um, you could on a test asking very specific questions. So in any case, there is a difference between the word given and the word and. And remember, given uses the marginal totals and and uses the grand totals. So what I would do is I would, on a piece of paper, write out this two by two cross classification table. And I would make yourself two questions. One is what is the probability of yes given drug? And the other one is what is the probability of yes and drug? And make sure you understand the difference. 
If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.